Hi guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. For this video, we will discuss about ionization energy. We will look at what is ionization energy and also we will do some simple calculation on this video. So first and foremost, what is actually ionization energy? Looking at the definition, your ionization energy is the minimum energy required over here to remove one mole. All right, we are removing one mole of electron to form one mole of gaseous atom or ion. So the first example that I have over here is your X gas. That is your one mole of atom. One. So this is the from one mole of gaseous atom. And what do you do to this one mole of atom? You remove one mole of electron. So you remove one mole of electron. Can you see that? And what do you form when you remove one mole of electron from one mole of atom? You will then form one mole of ion. To be exact, to form one mole of cation that has one positive charge. And this is the process that we call first ionization energy. And first ionization energy means you remove the first mole of electron. The first one mole of electron to be exact. Okay. And what happened over here is you remove the second mole. I say second mole. Second one mole of electron. Why? Look at this. Your X positive gas is actually coming from the product over here. All right. That is your X positive gas. So that is your one mole of ion. And then you remove one mole of electron over here. And from this one positive charge, you remove one more mole of electron. You will then form a two positive, right? And this is what we call second ionization energy because we are removing the second mole of electron. We are removing the second round of the one mole electron. I hope you can clearly see that we are still removing one mole of electron at one time. Every single time you only remove one mole of electron. Okay. So can we have the third ionization energy? Yes. Your third ionization energy means you are going to remove the third time of one mole of electron and you will be using the product of x2 plus that you produce your x2 plus gas will then become your x3 plus gas because you remove one more mole of electron and we are still talking about one mole of electron only so every single time in your ionization energy, we are always talking about one mole of electron from one mole of the gaseous atom or ion. Every single time is only one mole. But you can have first ionization, second ionization, third ionization. Okay, all right. Next, looking at the definition again, your ionization energy stated that is a minimum energy required. All right, why minimum energy required? And from the word required, we know that it actually means needed. So when it's needed, in the other words, your ionization energy must be a positive value. Remember, when the energy is needed, you must always have a positive value. Negative value means the energy is released. The energy is produced. That is your negative. So when the energy is required over here, therefore your ionization energy must always be positive. And the question over here will be why the energy is always required when you remove the electron? Simple. That is my nucleus. All right. So inside the nucleus, if you remember, we have the presence of proton that give you the positive charge and also you have the presence of your neutron which is your neutral, okay? And surround the nucleus, you have your energy level. And in the energy level, what do we have? We have electron, remember that? 
and the electron is right now a negative charge but your proton in the center is a positive charge in the nucleus so what would you experience over here between the nucleus and the electron is the positive charge of the proton and also the negative charge of the electron and this will cause a force of attraction and ionization energy is the energy required for you to remove this electron and when i say remove means i want to move this electron out of the energy level to move out from the energy level we need to break the force of attraction between the nucleus between the proton so how do we break the force of attraction you need energy okay so it's basically very simple you have your nucleus you have your electron in the nucleus you have proton that is positive charge your electron is a negative charge so you will have force of attraction they are now attracted to each other and right now i want to remove my electron out of the shell so how do i overcome the force of attraction i need energy so you will absorb energy so that the electron will have enough energy to overcome the force of attraction and move away okay that's why the ionization energy is always minimum energy required you always need energy to remove the electron because you want to overcome the force of attraction between the electron and the proton in the nucleus all right so always remember ionization energy must be always positive and when we say we remove the one mole of electron from the gaseous atom as we agree we are basically going to remove this electron from the shell out of the energy level all right so when out of the energy level let's say that is my n equals to one so when i remove this electron from n equals to one out of the energy level so the n final will be what simple the n final will be infinity in the other words your ionization energy to calculate the ionization energy your n final must be forever infinity okay because in ionization energy is always talking about remove electron to remove the electron means your electron must be out of the energy level out of the energy level means your n final is the furthest away which is infinity remember this because we need to know the n initial and also n final to calculate the delta e all right and a kind reminder over here all the formula that you have come across in the previous video all this formula is the formula to calculate energy wavelength frequency for one electron only only for one electron means the energy that you calculated over here is only for one electron and one transition do you remember that all this formula is only to calculate the energy the wavelength the frequency of one electron and one transition only okay and the problem arise over here is because your ionization energy is always talking about one mole one mole so in the ionization energy we are not talking about one electron we are talking about one mole of electron and what makes them different one mole of electron is actually equals to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 electron do you remember your mole concept your mole conversion in your topic one one mole and also one electron a different thing when i say one mole of electron i actually mean 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 electron not just one all right and that is what we call avogadro constant so how can i calculate the ionization energy if the delta e that i calculated from the formula is only for one electron the energy calculated over here is only for one electron but right now in the ionization energy i want one mole of electron 
So how can I change the energy for one electron to become one mole of electron? We are going to times with our Gado constant. Simple. All right. So can you see that right now? All the formula that we have is only to calculate one electron. But the trick over here in the ionization energy, you need to look for one mole of electron. That's why you need to use the Avogadro constant. All right, simple. Let's try a basic example over here. We are going to calculate the ionization energy in kilojoule per mole of an electron from Lyman series. Just to recall, your Lyman series over here means the n final of Lyman series is 1. Calculate the ionization energy. First and foremost, ionization energy must be always positive. Question asking for kilojoule per mole. So your ionization energy right now need to be in kilojoule per mole of an electron from Lyman series. From Lyman series right now means that your n equals to 1 is not n final anymore. You are moving from Lyman series. Therefore, it's n initial equals to 1. And since we are talking about ionization energy, we agree on the n final of ionization energy must be infinity because you are moving the electron out of the energy level that have no experience or a very, very weak experience of nucleus attraction. So it must be very, very far. That's why your n final must be infinity. And to calculate the ionization energy, at first we need to calculate the energy. So your energy formula equals to Rh 1 over n initial square minus 1 over n final square, where your Rh is a constant of 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 joule, while your n initial as agreed, 1 square minus 1 over infinity square, because your infinity is your n final. And whenever it's a 1 over infinity square, the answer must be 0. 1 over a huge number is definitely 0, okay? Therefore, your answer calculated will be 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 times 1 over 1, 2 square, which is 1 minus 0. Therefore, your final answer should be positive. 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 joule. And this is the delta E calculated for one electron only. Okay? And we agree on ionization energy is talking about one mole of electron. So ionization energy means we want the energy to remove one mole of electron. Okay? And we know that. 1 mole of electron is equals to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 electrons. Your Avogadro constant. Therefore, your ionization energy will be your positive 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 times with Avogadro constant. And the ionization energy calculated is a huge number of 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 6, oh, unit joule per mole. And be extremely careful with the unit that the question want. Question asking for ionization energy in kilojoule per mole. So to change the joule per mole to kilojoule per mole, easy. You divide the value by 1,000. So to change this to kilojoule per mole, you simply divide 1000 and then the joule per mole will eventually become kilojoule per mole, which is 1312.36 kilojoule per mole. And that is the final answer of your ionization energy. So we basically having two parts of the calculation. The first part is to calculate the energy for one electron by using the formula that you have learned in your previous video, calculating the delta E, the energy changes. Make sure your RH value is a 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 because we are talking about energy. Okay, so make sure your RH value is correct.
Your end initial over here is 1 because it's from the alignment series. Your end final must be infinity because it's ionization energy. The one that we are looking for is ionization energy, where the electron is now being removed. So when you solve the mathematics, the delta E that you obtain over here is only for one electron. But the question stated, ionization energy. Ionization energy is for one mole of electron. That's why you times with the Avogadro constant. And when you times with the Avogadro constant, the value that you obtain is only in joule per mole. Question stated, kilojoule per mole. So what do you do? You divide by 1,000. So after you divide by 1,000, that is the final answer of your IE, 1312.36 kilojoule per mole. And your final answer over here is not complete because the positive sign is not there. By that in mind, ionization energy always is a positive. Therefore, your complete answer for your ionization energy over here is positive 1312.36 kilojoule per mole. That is your final answer. So that's it for this short video explaining what is ionization energy and also a simple calculation to show how can we calculate the ionization energy from the formula that we have. Alright? If you have any question regarding ionization energy, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.